Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Town Meeting TV today. My name is Bobby Lucier, and I'm coming to you from the Lakeview Cemetery in Burlington to learn about Traveling for History, which is a YouTube channel that um, started during the pandemic that explores some of Vermont's historic sites and shares stories about Vermonters, uh, Vermonters past. So uh, to learn a little bit more about that project, I'm joined by the creator of Traveling for History, Patricia Arojo. Thank you so much for joining us. Patricia. Thank you so much for uh, asking. Yeah, of course. <laughs> this is fantastic. So excited to chat with you about the work that you've been doing. So um, maybe let's just start with how, what got you into history uh, before the the channel started. I know it's only been a few years, but you've been, I'm sure, interested in history for a long time. What, what sparked your interest in history? My mother was uh, always talking about Egypt uh, when I was growing up and um, which actually sparked my interest in ancient history. I have a degree in ancient history hmm. and uh, from UVM. So, uh, so, and because uh, ancient history isn't uh, necessarily an entire topic in, at UVM, I was, op I was, um, I also learned a lot from other types of history. So, so, uh, so I find history fascinating, you know, thinking about families, you know, my family, for instance, some, most of my mother's brothers served during World War II. So um, war history is fascinating to me. And uh, I just find it, it's kind of unfortunate the way history is taught in school, as if people are going to the gallows and missing the humor. Um, uh, but in spite of that, I still love history. And I've had some awesome teachers along the way, so. Um, so why not? Did you grow up in Vermont? I've lived here 46 years. Um, so I've lived most of my life here, but now I've lived in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, and here. Great. Yeah. And so your channel is called Traveling for History. Yes. Um, it's There's a lot of Vermont content. I don't, have you ever been outside of Vermont for one of your videos? Um, well, I, I visited Bodie, California, and I do have some Bodie videos on my channel. Uh, they're a series of photographs, really, uh, because I didn't have a channel back then. Mm -hmm. um, and I have also, um, uh, again, photographs as a video of Athens, Greece, because mm -hmm. I, again, wasn't filming back then. So, uh, uh, so yes, I have other things, but it's primarily Vermont. Right. Yeah. So you started the channel, what was it, three years ago? Can you tell us about why you started Traveling for History and what it kind of started out as? I've been thinking about it for a while because uh, I think there are plenty of stories people should know and uh, why not share them? So I finally decided to start it in uh, 2021. So February 2021, I, I found on YouTube that this name did not exist, uh, uh, channel name did not exist. Um, so I decided to go with that one. And the traveling is, uh, there's a lot of driving involved. Wow, that is the traveling portion. Um, so it was, so I filmed a bunch of videos here in Lakeview. I visited Lakeview for a lot of years. Family is buried here, uh, friends are buried here. So um, I determined that they were all garbage and deleted them all. So uh, I know, right? So I conducted some research and my very first video was the gazebo over there. Oh, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful place, um, you know, Adirondack style, uh, I think wood. So uh, it's a beautiful gazebo. So, um, so why not share these stories? So, uh, so yeah, and I'm always familiar with Vermont since I live here. Yeah, and especially this area because I lived in Burlington for decades. Yeah. And so you're videos, it seems like you're posting a video almost every day. Are you every posting day. a video every day? Yeah. Uh, today I have, as of today, of the filming of this video, 911 videos on my channel. I know, that is as much work as that sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> was it a COVID, did it, was it born out of the pandemic, your project? No, but I wish I was filming. I had been filming during that time period with fewer people out and about. Um, I typically, uh, well, in cemeteries, uh, cemeteries are busier than most people probably think, 
um, cars coming in and out, even in these remote, they're remote to me anyway, but uh, there's no such thing as the middle of nowhere, really. Someone knows where I am. Uh, when I film, it's, and I'll say, I don't know where I am, because when I'm driving, I don't know where I am, unless I'm at my site. So um, I've had a lot of people say, you were in yada yada. So, oh, yay, thank you for that. Um, but uh, it's nice to film on days when people aren't necessarily uh, nearby. Uh, so I don't have to keep putting my camera down or pausing it uh, because people are walking by. Yeah. And your videos, a lot of them have a few dozen views, but then a couple of them have a, a, a ton of views. One of them has over 12,000 views. It's um, a sh just shy of uh, 12,500. Okay. Yeah. And so, I mean, maybe do you want to talk a little bit about that video and why you think that video, um, you know, gained got some traction and, and um, whether that impacts your approach to other videos, are you hoping to connect with as many people as you can or are you just making the videos that you want to make? Both. Um, the video that we're talking about is, was he buried alive? And actually, quite frankly, was he buried alive is really the only way I like to say that. Uh, so he was, uh, Dr. Timothy Clark is buried in Evergreen Cemetery in uh, New Haven, Vermont. And um, he was terrified of being buried alive. He was a doctor in the 18, what did he die, 1850s? So his, his, his uh, burial plot is pretty fascinating. There's a, there's a mound. And um, the, on top of the mound is a what's called a capstone. So it's this big, con uh, uh, by granite, with a with a uh, pyramid sort of piece on top. And underneath that is a set of stairs that leads down to his grave. Um, he had a um, a bell attached around his uh, finger, uh, so he could ring, "I'm alive." Um, but uh, he was dead. Oh, and the most striking piece, the most striking piece of his is a, is a window that you could look down to his face. Wow, I know, it's, I'm, yeah, it's blah, blah, blah. Um, but he was actually dead. Uh, they apparently kept him for a week outside of the tomb, so he was dead, and then they buried him. But the, so the window, I've had a lot of people say, oh, I can see his face. The uh, uh, what I read is that the the window has um, has had condensation on it. Uh, the seal has given, so theoretically one cannot actually see that. But people see what they see. Yeah. <laughs> Who am I to say? So um, yeah, um, pretty uh, pretty wild. Yeah, that video was pretty taken off. That was my October thirtieth video in tw in twenty twenty one. So for Halloween week, I like to have spookier stuff. Um, because I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday. So, uh, so yeah, those videos. And, and the first time in 2021, I had a zillion cemetery videos because of course, what is it? It's October. Uh, a friend of mine did say, you know, you have a lot of cemetery videos. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. What, yeah. what do you like so much about cemeteries? Well, they're quiet places. Um, but again, there are more, there are more people around than you might think. But, um, so many fascinating people are buried in these places. You know, here at Lakeview, there are several Medal of Honor recipients. You'd be surprised. They're all of the American Civil War era. You know, some of these men should have video, uh, should have movies made of them. But the thing is, if someone wrote a script like that, they'd be laughed out of the producer's office. But this is real stuff. So, you know, it's, it's astonishing. I, I couldn't find one grave, so I just aimed my camera in the direction of it. Um, but, uh, you know, General O. O. Howard is buried here. And um, think Howard University, because he was the one who founded it. I know, right? So definitely people, living people should know about these dead people. A hundred percent. Yeah. Have you, you mentioned making sort of spookier content on Halloween. Do you, as you spend a lot of time in cemeteries, do you ever come in contact with spirits of the people that you're talking about? Or, or um, how do you think about that as you're walking through a cemetery? Well, I've had, uh, I filmed a, a video of, of an experience I had had. Now, I didn't film the experience. Uh, I wish I'd had presence of mind for that, but uh, no. Um, so here at Lakeview, and I think Lakeview is considered haunted to some degree. 
but uh, I was parked on a winter's day. There was snow on the ground and um, sitting in the car, you know, the wind was blowing, coming off the lake and all that stuff. The, um, and I noticed that the, the snow had, was holding in the air. That does not, I mean, I've lived here a long time. I've never seen that before. And it's, it appeared that, that, um, that there were two people walking side by side with, I mean, the snow was like on them, you know, on the, on the shape. I've never seen that. And it would move for a little bit. And then all of a sudden the snow was gone. I, I actually have chills on that one, but uh, I didn't know what to tell you. Uh, that was my experience. And then at uh, Evergreen Cemetery in uh, New Haven, where Dr. Clark is buried, um, the whole vibe there is just creepy. Um, well, it's, it's so odd, you know, and um, most cemeteries, there are driving paths, even if they're grass, you know, and um, they do have uh, essentially a U-shaped uh, um, single lane thing, but they're usually places to pull off for a car. No, the headstones are right up against the paths, the path, and um, there is no pulling off. So if you are right behind someone, which happened to me when I was filming there. A car pulled up behind me, and they were doing the same thing. They had come to see this grave of Dr. Clark. So, um, so that was uh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um. Are there any, so we're in Lakeview, you mentioned a couple of folks that are buried here. Um, I know you've done a lot of, you mentioned that you started doing videos and then you, uh, you know, started over and have done a lot more <laughs> videos in Lakeview. Um, what are, who are a couple other folks that are buried here that you, um, that you like to share the story of? Well, I did um, a video on uh, Theodora Peck. Uh, so, uh, her father, uh, Theodore uh, Peck, was um, one of those men who received a Medal of Honor. Uh, so the thing was interesting about Theodora uh, is how she sort of attached herself to him for, I don't know, uh, fame of some sort. Uh, she would accompany him to um, all the military engage engagements where he would share his story. And after he died, she actually changed her first name to Theodora and uh, would continue to talk about him in these things. But she was a poetess and an author on her own, in her own right. You can read some of her stuff online. Um, it's very much in the, it, written in that language of the early 20th century. So, um, but yeah, it was, uh, I think she's very interesting. She has no headstone. No headstone at all, no marker at all. Um, her, her parents um, and her, her brother who died when he was very young, uh, all predeceased her. And it's, it's interesting, an, an article came out recently about why there would be no death date numbers on a headstone. Uh, and that would be, likely be because everyone else died and there was no one left to um, think about putting a, a death date, an end date. And uh, it stands to reason, since her family is, was all, all predeceased her, that there was no one left to give her a headstone. Uh, so sad, really, for a woman who seemed to crave his attention and, and all that. And, and for those of you who are local, um, uh, Theodore Peck actually was the one who started Peck Insurance, too. So he had a, um, a, an illustrious career after the... Uh, after the Civil War. Right. Yeah. Patricia, what I find so amazing about your channel and your videos, you're able to find these stories, but then you're also a really fantastic storyteller. Oh, thank you. Uh, do you see yourself as a storyteller? And, you know, how do you think about putting your voice into the stories that you tell? And what, what, pers what do you think your perspective provides to the stories that you're, that you're sharing? I care about the stories I'm sharing. That, that, that's a, I think that's a big deal to care about these these folks, particularly the people. But um, I also film buildings, and um, I find them very interesting as well. When I think about the the things that happened, it's like taverns, for instance. Um, they're not just drinking holes. You know, they were they served food. They had uh, uh, rooms that people could stay in. Um, this. I mean, thinking about the stories that the people told there, they're also a place where people would gather to get the news 
It's not like they had Google. It's not like they even maybe had newspapers. So, um, you know, thinking about all the history of those places is pretty fascinating to me. And when I think about the people buried, um, everyone has a story to tell. You know, I've been working on a series uh, of these uh, American Civil War soldiers. Right now, in one cemetery uh, down in East Middlebury. But um, I found some information about about them, including some obituaries, and uh, it's and even sometimes there's a photograph, a photograph of people who've been dead for you know a hundred or more years. Um, so putting a face to a name, it just blows me away. Um, and you know, some of those obituaries, there was one, there was one man who had survived the Civil War, and then um, he died years later. He was um, cutting cordwood uh, with a friend. Thankfully, he was with someone. He was standing on uh, trees that were, um, that had fallen over, these whole trees, and they were sort of, uh, I guess, like this, um, resting on one another. So definitely, probably dangerous, definitely dangerous to stand on because when he was sawing something, he lost his balance and fell backwards. He hit his neck in such a way that he was completely paralyzed. And nine hours later, he was dead. By doing something that was just sort of everyday and commonplace. Yeah, so it, I think people should know these stories. Yeah. Absolutely. I have to ask where, you mentioned obituaries, where else do you look for these stories? Well, that was actually from a, a website that unfortunately has been down for weeks now. The, uh, the, um, um, they're having an issue with their database. Uh, so the, whoever manages that has been trying to get it back up and they have some things back up, but the soldiers themselves, the, all the stuff I would use, um, totally not available. So I only have the, uh, the men from that cemetery, but I still have about 20 to find. That one place, place has oodles of, of uh, these Civil War men buried there. But uh, so I find, uh, you know, when I talk about buildings, I'm often, often using Wikipedia. I know, I'm sorry, but it's, it's not as garbage a site as it once was. And I do check the citations to make sure they actually go someplace. Um, and when they don't, or it's questionable, I don't, I don't use the material. Why, why would I? Um, nobody wants garbage to watch. Well, actually, some garbage is good, but, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, this past Saturday, as of the date of this video, I was in South Hero, uh, Vermont, and, and well, in Grand Isle. So Grand Isle County I was up in. And for the, of the eight videos I filmed that day, six were interior uh, places. I got to be inside on a rainy, yeah, rainy day too. Uh, but inside filming in these, um, in these places, which, I hardly ever get to film inside. I mean, just hardly ever. I can think of two, two places where I filmed inside. And one was really cool. It was the um, Whiting Community Church. I'd filmed the church. It's on the state register of historic places. And um, so I talked about the history of the place and all that. And um, I got on Facebook, a, 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 the pastor reached out and said, if you want history, I'll give you history. So I said, does that mean we get to go inside? Yes, yes, we did. It was a beautiful church. Uh, the information I had said it was, it was, it was um, um, just one story, um, uh, but that wasn't true. There was a second story where the church actually was. So that was mind blowing too. So um, I got to see all sorts of stuff. I got to film all sorts of stuff. He answered all sorts of questions. Um, he was a lot of fun. And um, I love when there's chemistry uh, with uh, the person. You know, I got to film, oh, I guess it's the third place. I got to film inside the uh, Brick School Museum, which is in Georgia. Uh, the building had been a, a district school and um, the president of the Historical Society was was there that day. We had arranged this, um, and she gave me an impromptu tour of this Historical Society Museum. Oh, it was so much fun. She was excited, I was excited. Um, history nerd, perhaps? I, I may be a history nerd, but... Um, um, so, uh, so it was really fun. Uh, the, so I was able to film the Historical Society Museum, and actually a couple of people came over from across the street for another place, and, and uh, they were enthusiastic talking about all these great things. Um, it was a lot of fun. That video has not gone live yet, but uh, two of the places I filmed up there have. So uh, 
yeah, it's, I love connecting with those folks. Can't recommend historical society museums enough. Uh, they're often inexpensive or free. I love free. Um, <laughs> I live in a fixed income. It's not fixed all that high. So free is a beautiful thing. So, uh, and, and when I was filming in Grand Isle, you know, I had filmed the exterior of the building. It's on the National Register, the Hyde Log Cabin, which the same family owned from 1783 until the mid 1940s. So some member of the family, it's just, it's stunning to me, this, this. So walking in that building, because it's open uh, seasonally. Uh, so walking into that building, I felt like I was walking on the floorboards of history. Yeah, it's, it's um, that, was, that was amazing. Yeah, it's incredible yeah. to hear that you're able to connect with people and share your love for history, because that sounds really special. I also, I know you have over 500 subscribers on your channel and folks that are regularly interacting with um, what you're posting all the time. How do you, do you ever, do you meet the folks that are following your channel? Do you know who they are? You know, what kind of comments do you typically get on your, on your videos? I have 528 right now. And um, the only time I know who has subscribed to my channel is if they have a public channel. And it's surprising how many people have public channels, and I don't think they realize that um, because they have no videos up. I have a friend, for instance, who subscribed to my channel, and um, she has a public channel, which I told her because she has no videos. And she, I can't imagine she would ever have videos. So, um, and she did know, did not know. So um, that's the only time I know who has subscribed, unless, of course, they also comment. And um, but is it often friends and family, or do you, you you typically don't know the folks that are following here? No, almost zero wow. idea. Um, I, just, I will know on Facebook, um, uh, and that's not necessarily friends. Um, a lot of friends have subscribed to my channel and whatnot, but I've never asked my friends to do that. Um, I figured they would join if they if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and thankfully a lot of my friends have. Yay! Thank you, friends. Um, and what kind of comments and feedback do you get about your videos? Well, it's kind of interesting. It can be a mixed bag. On Facebook, I belong to a variety of groups. So um, when I'm talking about a building that's about to be demolished, for instance, um, the, um, the one in Bellows Falls was my first. And um, that was slated to be demolished in October when I filmed it, but it actually was demolished in, in December of that. Patricia, you have a mosquito in there. Oh, do I? Yeah, yeah they love me. Um, <laughs> So when I was there filming it, you know, I was talking about perhaps it could be saved. And uh, the comments on Facebook overall in this one group was, uh, are you going to do that? Do you have the money to do that? No, of course I don't have the money to do that. It, grants, you know, uh, you know, groups, you know, this was the first Methodist church in Bells Falls. It was the oldest, it wasn't used as a church anymore. It was a, the, the locals knew it as the Y, the YMCA, because it was the Y for 45 years but um, but it was the first methodist church and quite frankly it was the oldest church it would have been celebrating its 200th anniversary or 250th anniversary and and they tore it down one one member of the um well it's a village so sort of like a selectman um and uh, he wanted it torn down and that was it the building was gone um so they have a bigger parking lot I know, bigger farmer's market. Farmer's markets are great, but it's just such a shame that they lost the building. But it was in horrible shape. You know, the, the roof line was like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, smiley face on a roof line is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I know we're about to wrap up in terms ah. of time here. Um, one question, you know, I, I, it's amazing the stories that you're able to pull out from, um, from so long ago what makes a good story for you? What are you looking for when you're looking for things? You know, what, yeah, what, what makes a good story for you? Well, I like the human angle. So, so for instance, I got a lot of uh, comments, uh, positive comments on Facebook about, uh, so when I filmed the exterior of the Hyde Log Cabin, for instance, um, I was talking about the fireplace and, uh, I qualified that telling them, well, you know, let's be clear, this is not a Victorian fireplace. It's, you know, built in 1783. So this is a working fireplace. They would have had likely a spit for the animal that they would have 
uh, killed, you know, a swing arm for the pots so you could determine how how much heat you wanted or not. It likely had a, a spider. I hate that name for this thing, but it's a, a frying pan that has a tripod of legs, three legs on the bottom. And um, so you put embers underneath for a, 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 a lighter, you know, a, the, the uh, light feature, the low heat version. Um, very utilitarian, fascinating stuff, things that people used. The things, the fact that women, certainly women would be doing the cooking, uh, and because of sparks, you know, if you're wearing a linen dress because they would grow linen, uh, they'd grow flax, excuse me, they would grow flax, and then they would create linen out of it. But if you wear linen near a fire, there will be embers and it, it will, um, it can catch fire. So they would wear woolen garments, so woolen skirts uh, when cooking because it's a natural fire retardant. Well, it's a spark on wool and it will have a bit of a light and then it goes out. So much safer, but imagine using that on a typical Vermont summer day, you know, hot, humid, horrible, the three H's of summer. And uh, um, I mean, wool. So, um, so thinking about the people who've been working on that kind of thing, and it turns out, I was right, the, uh, it didn't have a spit. It's actually kind of a narrow um, opening compared to others I've seen. And it had no, um, and often too, those, those, um, those kinds of fireplaces would have had a, a place to bake bread on the side, on one of the side walls. So very utilitarian yeah. and dangerous. Um, you know, we're so fortunate now, we just turn it, turn the knob and mm -hmm. poof, we have heat on the stove. Right. Um, painting, it sounds like you're, you're good at really painting the picture of the human experience from thank you. A, a, different, a different time. Um, with a couple minutes left here, is there anything that you wanted to share about traveling for history that you haven't yet mentioned? You know, if anyone wants to talk about anything, you know, reach out. I have an email address, travelingforhistory at gmail.com. I'm not hip enough for a number, so the word four is written out. <laughs> and it's one L in traveling. But, uh, um, you know, it's fun. I, I was filming in a town, not going to tell you where because I'm working on this, um, and uh, and saw something that, that sparked a huge interest. I wish I could tell you more about this, but really I'm keeping it under wraps. But because of, a, a, of one thing I saw, I've been researching the three men involved. I, I have finally come to the end of what I could find about them. So, um, and talking to town clerks in a bunch of different towns, it's amazing. They know everyone and everything, I swear. Um, and are very helpful. So two more pieces and then I can, I can share this video about people and um, sad, sad, ter terrible story. So. Um, we'll have to stay tuned for that. You'll have to stay tuned for that, yes, <laughs> absolutely. But. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, Patricia Rojo, thank you so much for joining us and talking about Traveling for History. And um, you're, The channel is just called Traveling for History on YouTube, right? Yes, it's Traveling for History on all my social media, except for Twitter X, where they call themselves now. It's Traveling for High One there, but, um, but everywhere else is Traveling for History. Yeah. So I'm on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram, so you can find me all over the place. You can follow me wherever you like. It's free to follow. Um, so it's all good. Awesome. Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank you all for tuning in to Town Meeting TV today. My name is Bobby Lucier, and you can find this program and others on our website, cctv.org, or on our Town Meeting TV YouTube channel. Thanks so much. Have a good day. <laughs>